head to head. The one meeting in Atlanta last Rajiv year Ram to went serve. to Ram, and it will be the American Play. who begins on serve. Love 15. A little bit of a breeze, maybe stiffer than it's been early in the week. It'll take a minute to adjust to that. Oh, please. Still a bit of a buzz around the grounds as uh, folks from the induction ceremony are clearing out. I love the way Ram serves and comes in. Today's modern game over at Wimbledon and elsewhere, they all stay back. Nobody serves in volleys very often, but they do here because the grass is a little soft and the ball stays lower. 30 15. His volleying skills have uh, helped him secure six doubles titles in his career, including the one here in 2009 when he pulled off the rare singles doubles twin killing. It moved quickly to that ball down the center, blocked it back low. It comes ramming quickly, doesn't bend down at all, catches the ball, knifes it into the net. Blocks the Backhand return cross court past the yeah, charging G4. ram and a break point right out of the gate here for Leighton Hewitt. Let Hewitt step into this, blocks it with the backhand out wide. Little push, ram a little slow coming in. Smart play there on break point, ram coming in quickly and rent wrong foot, Hewitt playing behind him. Saves a break point there. That's been a, a key category for Rajiv this week. He's saved 86% of them. That's third best in the tournament. Conversely, Leighton has converted 17 of his 27 break chances this week. And he's going to get another one. Uh, All the way uh, Hewitt disguises uh, that Hewitt. passing shot there. He, Sets up nicely, takes a little time here now with the backhand. The volley sets up right in the middle of the court. He could go either side. And he's back to another break point here at the first game. Big first serve when he needs it. Use. He's had a brilliant Hewitt has returning week. He's been number one in the tournament, points one returning first serve. Likewise, number one points one returning second sir advantage run donald if if Rajiv can't finish points with his serve and, and then his volley. If they get into neutral rallies, you favor Hewitt significantly? Well, I do if they stay back, both of them. And there, Hewitt made a sloppy forehand into the net. A little unusual. He'll feel a lot better, though, if Ram's on the baseline. Yeah. He'd like to do Ram. that all day long. Rajiv Ram saves a couple of break points in his opening service game and holds two First open. Game. The Hall of Fame Tennis Championships first held here in Newport in 1976. It's the only grass court tournament, not only in the United States, but on the pro level, held outside of Europe. I, I know as a grass court aficionado, that's got to disappoint you. Well, you know, the, the whole game used to be grass. It's all now in the gone to hard courts or clay courts. And you see here that, that uh, John Isner is the first top seed to win the tournament last year. And of course he's defending, we'll see him later today. The casino curse is no more. That lasted for uh, 35 years. And finally, the number one got it done a year ago.
Now, it's worth pointing out that we, we refer to this place as the Newport Casino. It, the term casino has nothing to do with gambling. There, there's never been gambling here. In, in old sort of Gilded Age America, a casino referred to a club where social activities took place, and the Newport Casino was a place where billiards and bowling and dining and, and dancing and the such went on. Uh, there smartly Hewitt's worked his way into the net on the second shot took the forehand came in In 2009, when Ram won this tournament, oh, beat Sam Query in the finals. That was a very good win. I remember Barry and I worked that match, Brett, and uh, Ram really played well. Great volleying that day. Query was in the draw this year. He won his first rounder against Alex Bogomolov, but lost to Duty Sela of Israel in the round of 16. Oh, T15. Each man with a double now. Sam Query, by the way, back up to 55 in the world as he continues his comeback from uh, surgery last year. Missed the Olympic cutoff, barely. Top 60 get in, but uh, Sam was not in the top 60 after the French, which is where the line was. Yeah, man, it's very smart second serve there by Hewitt. Just slices it wide, one game one. way out of court. Show you how uh, Leighton got here to the semifinals. Pospisil, the Canadian, in the shortest match of this tournament this week, 49 minutes. Then the qualifier from the United States, Tim Smichek, 6-1 in the third. And, and then Sela, the Israeli who beat Sam Query, succumbed to Leighton, 6-4 and 6-3. This match really shocks me, that score of the first one, Pospisil. He's a heck of a good young player, and, and he got beat so easily by Hewitt. Love 15. Leighton Hewitt. Uh, still tremendously popular down under with the Australian fans. They view him as sort of the fighting Aussie. And he's extremely, has a great popular following down there in Melbourne. Unlucky as that clips the tape and goes wide. He was a, a television broadcaster for Channel 7 down in Australia during the Open this year. And uh, Donald, I'm not saying anything, but look out because he's good. And he will be in uh, either one of our chairs before too long. He's <laughs> not only very charismatic, but uh, does a great job communicating his expertise about the game. He certainly knows the game well. Uh, wind taking that one long. The road 50. to the semis for Rajiv Ram took on Slovenia's Greg Zemia. 6-3 and 6-1. Michael Russell, the veteran American who's had a bit of a resurgence this year from Houston in the second round. And the two-seed, Kei Nishikori, the Japanese star upset in the quarters. And Ram did not come in on that second yeah, ball, yeah. and Hewitt took advantage of it. This is the side serving into the wind, dead into it, as a matter of fact. Very good point, Brett, because the server really is traveling uphill at that end. It's so hot here today, you wouldn't think that wind is a factor, but on the center court it is. And that's long. so uh, another double second for Ram and another 
break chance for Hewitt. He had two in the opening game, didn't convert either. It's not insanely hot at low 80s here, but the humidity is unusual. I saw 78% humidity on the forecast today. It's thick. Yes. Second ace for Ram to erase the break point. Side out, backhand return. That's what Hewitt does best, return a serve, particularly off the backhand side. Steps around, gets his shoulder into it. Look at his turn there. Perfect. Classical stroke, and he's back to break point. Fourth save yes. by Ram back to Deuce. He's won. Hewitt has more return games than anybody in this tournament, 17 of them. Deep second serve by uh, Ram. And he was still coming in behind it, which tells you he's so much more comfortable at net than hanging around that baseline. He's only been broken once this week, Rajiv Ram. He saved six of seven break points coming in, another four today. Again, Ram digs himself out of trouble in that service game as well. He's been challenged both times on. Sit quickly, please, ladies and gentlemen. Any seats for now, please? Time. Gorgeous day in Newport, a little bit breezy, but that's just fine as Leighton Hewitt steps up to serve opening stages of this first set, first semifinal. Isner and Harrison still to come. We are ready. Thank you. That's us up there, right-hand side of your screen. You see the flags whipping. Great movement there by Leighton Hewitt. 15 left. Scampering from side to side, covers that ball very well down the line and keeps it going. Had that ball on his racket, decided to let it go wide.
Donald is yeah, pretty yeah. amazing when you think about what's going on in Leighton Hewitt's left foot. He had the second surgery in February of this year to have two screws and a plate put into his left big toe, which is uh, chronically arthritic and misshapen after years of launching into his service motion and pounding on hard courts. The, the joint at the end of his toe is completely fused. It doesn't bend anymore, but it also isn't causing him pain anymore. Oh! 13, well, he's 15. been in 43 and 42 finals on the ATP Tour, having won 28, lost 14. So he's had a remarkable record. This will be his 43rd final, and he's 7-0 when he gets into the finals on grass. It's pretty remarkable. It, it, it just makes you wonder when a guy has achieved as much as he's achieved and is going through as much pain as he's going through where the motivation comes from, and that, that just speaks to Leighton Hewitt's character. Guy doesn't know how to do anything but win, or at least try. Beautiful backhand by Ram with a lot of overspin. He's coming in behind it, but he rolled it. Yeah, Here's that first one. And now he gets a shorter one, and he just really creases it to that open court. No movement there. Hewitt watches it. Great shot. See there, Brett, when he can chip and come in behind yeah, that second cool. serve, he's, Hewitt's hitting into the wind, and it's really a gale on that side from the baseline. Such a grass court play that, that we saw quite a bit of at Wimbledon, but almost nowhere else. That forehand chip approach, we're used to seeing it on the backhand side, but that's a savvy grass play. Ram with the break point here. That was a real smart play by him. Let's see what he does on the second serve break point. Yeah. Forehand yeah. wide from Hewitt. First break of serve goes to the American. He takes a 3 1 lead. Ram leads three games to one. It's been a long road back for Hewitt, who, who's not exactly match tough. In fact, he had only won four matches on tour prior to this week in 2012. He made a nice run at the Australian Open. Remember, he beat Andy Roddick in the second round. Roddick had to retire. He beat Milos Raonic in four sets in the third round. Brilliant return block back past the charging ram. He took Djokovic to Love four him. sets in the round of 16 at the Australian Open. And it was after that 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 second foot surgery became necessary, and he, and he hasn't really played except a couple matches since then. But that was a heck of a record in the Australian Open. Three very good matches. Oh. Leighton Hewitt, unseated at the Australian Open, would have to be one of the more dangerous floaters in a draw yeah. you would ever uh, have a nightmare about facing. He gets the lob there off the backhand side, but it's a little short. Ram just knifes it off. Another good first serve by Raj. 30-15. Ram 118 in the world right now, headed up. Leighton is 233 in the world. That, that sounds almost ridiculous to say next to his name. Obviously, it has to do with the, the light schedule and the injuries. He got the wild card into the Olympics. Keeping the ball low off the return. Yeah, Ram a little slow and stands up high for that half volley. When you think about Leighton Hewitt, Donald, a guy short on stature, five foot ten, and what he's been able to achieve, who does he remind you of from from your era of playing? Well, he doesn't play the same way, but 
Ken Rosewall was short and 5'7 and scrappy as heck. He's a scrappy fighter. And I always, you know, I'm sitting here watching him and thinking about when he won Wimbledon. That was a heck of an achievement with his style of play. Because in those days, everyone still served and came Less. in. Second and he did it by return. Very good return, very good counter puncher, and a great competitor. He'll find a way to stay in this match. Just too yeah. good on the serve and volley from Ram, who consolidates the break, takes a 4-1 lead as the American returns to the side of his greatest triumph two years ago, three years ago, and tries to revisit it. Take your seats quickly, please, ladies and gentlemen. Back in Newport, and a reminder that the 2012 Emirates Airline U.S. Open Series kicked off for the men in Georgia next week with the BB&T Atlanta Open. Live quarterfinal coverage presented by Mercedes-Benz begins Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern on Tennis Channel, where champions live. Break lead for Rajiv Ram, the 28-year-old American Hewitt serving at 1-4. Thank you. We are ready. Thank you. Especially behind the court. Thank you. Somad of Egypt is our chair today. The wind couldn't quite push that backhand on. lob back in. We mentioned Ram winning the title here in 2009. Maybe the man who de deserves the most thanks from Rajiv for that title was Marty Fish, because it was Marty Fish who pulled out of the draw that year and allowed Rajiv to get in as a lucky loser. Let's first. And then he won the tournament. And then he won the tournament as a lucky loser, which almost never happens. He tried to qualify, but he lost. He beat uh, Jesse Levine in the quarters, Olivier Rokas in the semis, and Sam Query in that three-set final that you mentioned, Donald. All three pretty good wins. On grass. And in fact, uh, on July 10th, the, the quarterfinal day, he won four matches in one day here in Newport because rain had delayed the tournament. 15, he had to play his round of 16 and quarterfinals in both singles and doubles, and he won them all. Wound up winning both titles. Chip approach from Ram, but Hewitt answered with the forehand pass. Hewitt's uh, trying to stay back a little bit, get some feel on the court. Some of these rallies, he steps in there with that whip. Beautiful touch. Great depth off the shot. Seems so comfortable on the forehand side.
Let's second song. Thirty forty. Yeah, it clearly doesn't have a feel. That's a, a routine backhand that Hewitt would almost never miss, and it gives Rajiv a break point. Second of the match, he converted his first. Hewitt doesn't look match tough to me at all. It's like he's just trying to get back into some rhythm. Hadn't played that much in the last six months because of the injury. Just missed, and, and of all things, grass is maybe, Donald, the hardest Dude. thing to get back accustomed to when you haven't played in a while. Yeah, because the bounces are all inconsistent sometimes on a grass court. These courts here are quite different than Wimbledon. Wimbledon's much harder underneath. The ball bounces higher. There's Beck Hewitt, Leighton's wife, in the pink. Leighton proposed to Beck right after he lost the Australian Open uh, final in 2005. They have three children. I'm told they're they're all here. Mia is six, Cruz is three, and Ava is one and a half. So Leighton fends off a break point in that game, holds for 2-4, stays within shouting distance Rally. in this opening set. Rajiv Ram trying to win his second title here. He is on the list of American champions here in Newport over the last decade. They get Chinepri and Dent back there in 202 and 3, and then, of course, the last three years, Ram, Fish, and Isner, all Americans, all young ones coming up. Fish, of course, uh, is the highest ranked. Isner's coming on like gangbusters on the world tour. <laughs> Marty will be making his return in Atlanta next week. He sure needs to play. Played Love awfully well at Wimbledon, but he didn't seem to have much match toughness, although they played five sets. It was a real tough match to lose. I'm sure you've all heard the, the story of, of Marty's heart arrhythmia that he's battled back from, a procedure to correct that in, in March, and so He's getting match tough again. Won't be playing the Olympics. Going to play the City Open in Washington, D.C. instead. Silver medalist from eight years ago in Athens. Marty's been in the top Love 10 most of the last year. He slipped to 13 at the current ATP ranking, and Isner has slid in there at 11. So he's the highest ranked American. Remember those. Tour ranking switch every two weeks. You got to defend your points. Is it now one week? Yeah, every week. Your points come off from 52 weeks ago. So Don Isner defending the 250 from his win here a year ago, and now three break chances for Hewitt to draw even. Fifteen foot. 0 for 5 now on break chances. Leighton. <clears throat> Great save on the line. a sound you're used to hearing. A little come on from Leighton Hewitt and a fist pump as he gets the break and draws.
Yeah. Yeah. Find your seats. Which of these ladies and gentlemen? The signature guttural utterance of Leighton Hewitt, and now it's right on his chest. He's, he's got his uh, shirts printed up with a little come on on there. I, I mean, I know he didn't originate the term come on, but I, I think he made it popular in the tennis lexicon, right? I wonder if that's his own line of clothing. <laughs> I mean, he's got a Yonex deal. His, his, shoe, uh, his racket's Yonex. His, uh, what's on the shorts? That, those are Yonex, I think. Thank you. Thank you. So I don't know. You know, Pat Cash, the fellow Aussie, when he won Wimbledon in 87 with that checkerboard headband on, started marketing those things. So, I mean, you know, if you come up with a signature item, why not? Big, big game here for Leighton Hewitt, 3-4. He's worked his way back in from a breakdown. You know, Nike makes You Cannot Be Serious t-shirts for McEnroe. I, Love 15. Bad start. A little double. His third of the match. There you see, Brett, how soft the court is in there close. I mean, Leighton makes a great drop volley here, but the ball dies. That's why he comes in. Ram keeps the ball very low. And look at that little drop shot. Didn't come off at all. A little slip from Leighton up in that part of the court that isn't used as much, isn't worn in, a little greasy. Fifteen. Hewitt lost in the first round at Wimbledon a couple weeks ago. Drew the sixth seed, Joe Wilfried Sanga, three, four, and four. Lost the first round the week before at Queens to the big serving Ivo Karlovic, three and two. Alex, full T fifteen. So these wins this week, his first on grass this year. His first wins other than the three at the Australian Open and the one in Davis Cup group play against China. Donald, for about the last year and a half, Leighton has been back working with the legend Tony Roach. I know you think that's got to be good for his game. Well, Tony, uh, I used to work closely with Tony in the years when he was competitive and play as a player. There's just no finer guy to have as a coach. Lendl used him for a long time when he was number one in the world. And he just is a tremendously hard worker and very solid as he approaches the game. Tony Roach is one of the, one of the great Australians. Tony's uh, not traveling this week. Peter Luchak is uh, with Leighton on the road. I should mention that Tony really is in charge of all the young coming up. He had four or five others at Wimbledon 
some who tried to qualify and failed. One or two got beat. They got beat early at the uh, at the uh, Wimbledon this year. All of Australians were out by the second round, which was a shock to the, to the country. Beautiful return by Leighton cross court keeps the ball well inside the line. Caught it early. On. Steps right into this and gets the cross court angle that he wanted. Ram didn't move for it at all. That two hander of Hewitt, the backhand side, can really hurt you. He catches it early enough. Missed that backhand volley. It, it, it's got to be shocking for fans, uh, for, for you, who, who in your heyday, Australia was the other dominant tennis nation aside from the United States. I mean, they don't really have a guy. They have uh, young Matthew Ebden, who's sort of converted himself from a doubles player into a singles player. But the, Australia is without a star male player. Well, everybody right was hoping Tomic would come into his own, about 19, 20 years old, but he hasn't. And he's very unpredictable because he's so emotional on the court. And off the court, it would seem. They were praising him so much two years ago, Brett, that's when I was down in Australia. He was the coming champion, but he certainly hadn't moved very far up. Federer that's gave him a, a pretty comprehensive beating on stadium down uh, at the Australian Open this year. He's had some uh, off the court issues. Tomic got into a dust up with the police down on Gold Coast near his home. But this man is the one they, they still love the most, even with that 233 next to his name. But that will change as he plays back into him. He's so much better than that ranking. He's so well regarded. As they're proud of him the way he fights. Great forehand. Opens up the court. 30 40. Gets him to break point. Remember, Hewitt was down. 4-1 in this opening set, has a chance now to take a 5-4 lead and serve it out. Great little return. Leighton well behind the baseline. Should step in a little bit on the second serve. Juice. That was a careless error. Ram got away with a high kicker. And I thought Leighton would hurt him with that. Fifth service game of the day for Ram. He's faced break point in four of them. That's because he's missing so many of his first serves. And there's the result. Beautiful backhand return. Advantage. To its left hip. Very comfortable in that play. Big serve when he needed it. Fourth ace for Ram. Right into our camera. Perfect toss by Raj. Fred, I wonder what the taping around his calves do for his legs. It's a little unusual. Will fall. Advantage of it. Yeah, here it's 
Hewitt gets the break, his eighth chance of the day, his second conversion. Four games in a row for the Aussie. He'll serve for the opening set when yeah. we come back to Newport. Come on. A reminder that the next stop for the women is the Emirate Airline U.S. Open Series stop in Carlsbad, California, the Mercury Insurance Classic. Carlsbad, don't miss quarterfinal coverage presented by Mercedes-Benz beginning Friday night, 1 a.m. Eastern time on Tennis Channel, where champions live. So Leighton Hewitt digs himself out of a 4-1 hole in this opening set. Rally's four straight games will now serve for it at 5-4. New sponsor for the U.S. Open Series this year. Pleased to be associated with Emirates Airline. Atlanta Time. for the men next week. Then they continue in L.A. The City Open in D.C. is a men's and women's event. I'm sitting next to the founder of that one. Are you excited to have uh, the men and women on well, one site really, this year? We really are. It's be eight-day tournament, and uh, the women will be there along with the men as usual. Now, a lot of people were you know, asking about the women's side of the game for the last five or ten years. So we really wanted to try to have an event with both men and women. And we're building a new outdoor stadium, another 2,500 seats, and five new practice courts for everyone. So it'll be an improvement, I hope. It's a great tournament in Rock Creek Park in D.C. 15 left. Now the women were uh, in College Park, Maryland last year, and so you're bringing them together on one site in D.C. That's going to be a, a great U.S. event to complement the Olympics. would like to end this set easily and quickly here at 5-4. Good depth off the forehand. Ram didn't do much with that shot. Wasn't in position. Just kind of slapped at it. But Hewitt is gaining confidence now. As the match is switched around. Well placed first serve, swung him wide. Didn't go for the power, just went for the placement and got it. Triple set point to the Aussie. Yeah, um, first no set come on necessary, just a little wag of the racket as Hewitt holds at love to end the first set. Six, four, five uh, games in a row games. on the trot for the Aussie. Second set from Newport coming up. First set to Leighton Hewitt, 6-4 in our first semifinal in Newport. While we have a second, let's go down to Harry Chicklin. Thank you, Brett. We're here with a very special guest, Paul Crump, the executive vice president of the Chubb Corporation. You've been part of this Newport tournament sponsoring the event for seven years. What keeps Chubb coming back? Well, Harry, it's a real pleasure to be with everybody. First of all, it's just great to be around the, uh, the game of tennis. Obviously, Newport is a spectacular venue. Uh, it's a wonderful place for us to bring our valued clients and our trusted business partners, our agents and brokers. They, they love the venue. They love to see the world-class tennis. And uh, it, it's just wonderful to be associated with the Tennis Hall of Fame. It's been a long-standing association. What can we look forward to with Chubb Insurance? Well, uh, we're known for our consistency, Harry. And uh, 
You know, we've been uh, the insurer, actually, the Hall of Fame and the museum for many, many years. And in fact, when they had a terrible fire back here in 1998, uh, we were part of restoring the landmark. So it's that type of consistency and perseverance that is exemplified by these world-class athletes and why Chubb likes to be associated with the Tele Tennis Hall of Fame. Paul Crump, thank you so much and for helping to make this great day possible. Thank you. Take Harry care. Chickman with Paul Crump. Back up to you, Brett. All right, Harry, thanks very much. You know, this this place has actually been victimized by two major fires, the one that uh, thank you, they and mentioned in 1998 and, and one in 1945. The one they were talking about destroyed the original court tennis building. It was rebuilt. Now there are... Uh, Numerous facilities around here besides the grass court. There's indoor courts. There's a clay court. It's a spectacular place. Oh. Oh. A couple of big serves from. Yeah. Rajiv Ram to open the second set. I, there aren't that many facilities like this in international tennis anymore. The, the stadiums are getting bigger. They're getting a little more impersonal. But this is a throwback, Don. Yeah, this really is. It's a beautiful example of where you can have a nice crowd of about four or 5,000 people, but nestled under the umbrellas and in close where you get a good view. If I were coaching Ram right now, in this match, I would be telling him to come in on everything. He's not going to be Hewitt from the baseline. He's got a big serve, got to get more of the first serves in and take the play away from Hewitt. Late call, but he calls it out. You know, if you were coaching Ram, Donald, that, that, that's there's an opening for that. Rajiv is traveling without a coach. If you'd like to hop down afterwards and work with the young man a little. I'm afraid it's too little, too late. <laughs> but I do like the way he's got that big serve. I just like to see him take more advantage of his height and his reach on this grass court because he's not going to beat him from the baseline. Right. Hewitt, of course, is a really good return to server. Steps in very nicely here. He doesn't look like him at all in any way, but he returns like him. Rosewall off the backhand side, who was so consistent and bounced around at 5'7". I don't know, what is Hewitt, about 5'10"? 5'10"-ish, 5'9", 5'10". Double fault. That's the fourth of the day for Ram and what looked like a pretty routine service game for him at 40 Love gets to deuce. Clayton thinks that ball was well wide. We well, you explain, uh, Brett, there's no challenge review on this match because there's no video boards where they can come in and show it to the crowd. And the rule is you have to be able to show it to the live audience or you can't use the chase review. Get following this match, the All-American semifinal number two between the top seed defending champion John Isner and 20-year-old Ryan Harrison. That's up next. Another return at the feet of the oncoming Rajiv Ram uh, earns Slayton a break point here. You'd always like to get it early on, right in the first game of the second set for Hewitt. 
Changes all the pressure in the match. Great reaching volley there by Ram. We'll stop volley. Yes. Layton goes with the forehand cross court. Ram comfortably there, drops it over, and the ball dies on this soft court. So nine break chances for Hewitt. He's converted two. That is a brilliant piece of serve and volley tennis from Ram on a pretty solid return from Hewitt. Advantage. Right. Hewitt lunging at that ball. Cannot put it by Ram. Ram is in close, very firm backhand, low volley. So Ram had 40 love. Leighton battled for break points, and then the American able okay. to hold. Five games in a row for Hewitt in that opening set. Here's how he did it with power off both wings. Terrific returner there. Loves that forehand. Steps around quickly and just smacks it with the top spin. Comes in behind it there. Gooses it up, yelling, come on. So Ram stops the bleeding here in the second set with a hold to open. It is the first semifinal for Leighton since Halla on the grass in 2010. He beat Roger Federer in the final there. As you mentioned earlier, Donald, he's never lost a final on grass, but he's he's got to get there first. That's right. Imagine him coming in here in 1998 as a 17-year-old playing Newport. Was ranked 162 14 long years ago. Great touch. He's known in Australia as a battler. And he loves to fight and compete. And here you'll see why. He moves so well. And a little drop volley off the backhand side. That was almost a pass, but he couldn't get it by Leighton, who's awfully quick. picking up. Nineteen ninety seven is, is when folks first became aware of Leighton. He was fifteen years old. He became the youngest old. qualifier in the history of his home slam in Australia. He won his first ATP World Tour Tournament the next year, 98, at home in Adelaide. Just 16 years old. Youngest winner on the ATP World Tour other than Aaron Crickstein and Michael Chang. At 16? Yep. Ah! Best year, 2001. Won six titles that year, including the US Open, finished number one in the world. Forehand chip charge again from Ram. 15 thoughts. I like that play, but he's got to keep the ball deep. If it's short, Hewitt's going to hurt him. But it still is a good aggressive approach as opposed to staying and rallying from the baseline. Not enough stick on the backhand. Easy put away volley for Hewitt. Thank you. Donald, to me, the biggest surprise on Hewitt's resume is the fact that in 16 appearances at his home Grand Slam, the Australian Open, he's only been past the round of 16 once, that final in 2005. That's correct, but he's you know, there's a lot of best of five down there. It's hot as can be. I watched him two years ago, and he really got 
Trouts on that court, the labor court, didn't play very well in the round, the round of 32, I think it was, maybe the 16th. And he lost to Safin in a four-set final in 2005. He was he won the first set. There was a player who never lived up to all his greatness, Safin. I saw him win the Open that year in, in, in America, and I thought he was going to be the – just crunched Sampras, as I recall. And he wasn't heard of much. He won a he, couple of U.S. Opens. Quite remarkable. He's, he's serving in Parliament in Russia now. You're kidding. Yeah, for sure. Yes. It's like Nastasi running for mayor of Bucharest, <laughs> which he did yeah. a couple of years ago. Advantage of it. That was a quick call on that baseline. Ram thought it was good. Hewitt turned immediately to go, go back to the towel. I think he thought it was good. Hard to see it at this angle. Gets Hewitt to add. Yes. Rajiv Ram, I think you, you'd safely qualify as a, a journeyman player. He's never been higher than 78 in the world. That was back in 09, the year that he won the title here. That's his only pro title. He had a successful college career at Illinois, helped lead the Illini to that perfect 32 and 0 season in 2003 in the national championship. the thing based on what you see from Rajiv Ram that, that's held him back from being a top 50, top 30 player? I think a couple things. One, he's a little slow sometimes moving, particularly laterally. He's got big arm span. And, and secondly, he, he's got a good serve, but he misses a lot of first serves. He's very inconsistent on his serve. Yeah, Ram. So now it's uh, Ram with the lead. Ram leads two games to And just like the first set, he had a break advantage there, was not able to hang on to it. We'll see what he does with it in set number two. But I mean, th th this is the rank and file of professional tennis. I mean, we see the Federers and Nadal's and Djokovic is flying private and, and living the highlight. This is a guy who's making his living week to week, playing challengers, trying to get in in qualies. And, it's a noble living. It's a tough living. Matches don't come easy in the challenge round. They, they, they don't, and to prove it is his match record at the tour level this year, 0-1. <laughs> that's prior to, to this week, but that's, you know, life when you play. And this is a guy who's played the, uh, you know, glamorous locations as Leon, Mexico, and, and Tallahassee, and the Nottingham 2 Challenger, and Guadalajara. That's not Wimbledon Monte Carlo. It's been a rough year, even by kind of minor league yeah, standards for Rajiv Ram up to now. One for nine trying to qualify for main draws. One for nine. Miami's the only place that he got in. Well, he lives and dies by the first serve. I mean, he counts so hard on that big first serve. He's got to serve well to win because he likes to come in behind it. And on a hard court, that second serve is not going to be enough. They can pass you too easily on his second ball. 
He's been serving well in this tournament. 25 aces oh, coming in. That's third best in the draw this week. He's got five more today. He's won 83% of the points on his first serve. And 58% on his second serve, which isn't bad. And Cruz here to three love in the second set. Came back with a deep return and ran oh, this long footed. He was a little careless. He defended his title, Rajiv did here in 2010. And he lost to uh, Raven Clausen, 7 6 in the third. He had a five love lead in that third set that year. God, that seems hard to believe. Had match points, couldn't get it done. Pressure of defending for the first time in his life. Sixth double for the American. He has not had an easy service game in this match. Again. Yeah. But Ram. holds there for three loves. So Ram, who lost the first after squandering Ram a lead, leads. has another one three in the second. Take your seats quickly, please. Thank you. Ready for play. Thank Back you. live in Newport, Leighton Hewitt serving down Love three second set. He took the first six games to four. Brett Haber and Donald Dell, along with Harry Chickma at the Hall of Fame. 15 up. Our congrats again to the class of 2012, just inducted about an hour ago here at the Hall of Fame. Jennifer Capriati, Gustavo Quirton, Manuel Orantes, Randy Snow, Mike Davis. What did you think of uh, Jennifer's speech? Pretty moving. I thought it was really touching yeah, because she really tried to convey to the crowd and to the audience how hard she had worked to come back, and readjust her life so well. She looks fantastic. She really does. I think she said she was 36. I don't know why she didn't start playing a little bit. She's got shoulder problems oh, that are uh, severe, and I know that's uh, what took her away in, in the second incarnation of her career when she won those three Grand Slams. It's, it's tough for her to even serve. She, she was at an exhibition that I did in, in Cayman Islands last fall, and she's got a tough time with that shoulder, I know. Really? Yeah. Ooh. Caught Leighton a little bit off balance. He lunged yeah, for it. He sure did. He hit a good shot. Ram leads three games to one. So interesting to see uh, Monica Sellis present Jennifer today because for different reasons, they, they each had a couple different compartments to their careers. 
so many parallels to them. And Monica looks great. We saw her a couple oh, of years yeah. ago when she got inducted. She's the young lady who you recall, Brett, was actually stabbed on an over. I was in Germany at the time, and it was on a changeover, and somebody was stalking her, ran out on the court, the changeover, and actually stabbed her in the back and set her back for a couple of years. Now, you know, Jennifer's, you know, to, to use that term, wounds were, you could argue, self-inflicted, but they each had to struggle to come back and, and create a second portion of their careers, and I think that's why they, they share this connection. Yeah. It was very touching uh, when Monica spoke today about Jennifer. <laughs> Leighton down 3-1, needs a break back, and he knows it. I think the chair called that not up on late side of the net. It's amazing when you look at the resume comparison between these two guys, Leighton Hewitt, two Grand Slam titles, another two runner-up finishes, four Grand Slams beyond that. Rajiv Ram has never won a match at a Grand Slam, period. End of story. Jeez. <laughs> He's uh, been in seven main draws, lost first round, all of them, never gotten into the French. Ooh, that's Leighton's best shot so far in the match. He was pushed there wide, and he just cracks the ball yeah, across court. Steps into that. Look at the shoulder action there. Gets down low. Perfect. Finishes over his shoulder. Great coordination. The wheels are still special on Leighton Hewitt at 31 years of age. That toe has caused him all that kinds of problems, but he says the pain is eliminated now after that surgery that fused the joint together and moving extremely well on the grass today. Another break chance, his 10th of the day. Moved to cover that yes. drop volley quickly and just missed the outside line when he went cross court. Raj happily back to Deuce. Rajiv has just hired a, a fitness trainer, Ryan Harbour. He's actually going to share the trainer with a young Brian Baker, who's authored one of the great comeback stories yeah. in right. recent memory. Yeah, Ram. Hold serve there, and so Ram has a 4-1 lead. That's just what he had in the first set, and it didn't work out.
you're the vice chairman. Another look inside the International Tennis Hall of Fame. Donald, you're the vice chairman of this place. Tell us a little bit about what we can see when we Well, it's inside. a spectacular museum. We've really upgraded it tremendously in the last six or eight years. Every era of tennis is represented with a lot of videotapes now, a lot of high-tech stuff that's inside there. There's a great Don Budge with a backhand. But this is, a, this is a public facility. Anyone's welcome to come here to the museum at the Hall of Fame. And I think it's one of the great examples of what tennis can do if they get together because we really built this up over the last 10 years it is a spectacular facility mark stenning chris clauser and the people who run it do a great job well we the unsung hero is doug stark Nothing. who's the museum curator he has really been a f wonderful wonderful addition here about four years ago and he just modernized everything inside. We'd love people to come through Newport to stop and see it. Kids are welcome. Kids are free. You stop by the Horseshoe Plaza, you're likely to see a, an old-fashioned tennis exhibition in, in whites taking place on one of the grass courts. Sit on and the, the public can play here on the courts, too. All they do is, you know, there's an hourly charge. But anyone can play. It's not a private club at all. And we welcome the public. Even as the tournament up. takes place, that's just outside the uh, Talbert Stadium Court. Folks from the uh, Newport Lawn Tennis Club getting their uh, Saturday afternoon lesson in. A lot of play out there on those three courts. Leighton with the chip approach, and he slides as he uh, made a split step to hit that volley that, that never came. Sets up and falls. Very Good thing it was on a grass court. Right. Here, Rajiv asked if he was all right. as he approaches Four that time. You know, when someone says to you, are you all right, can you imagine the other guy saying, no, I'm actually uh, badly hurt. Can, can you take it easy on me the next game or two? <laughs> They're always going to say, yeah, I feel fine. <laughs> They're hurting. Double for Layton. Drops back to Deuce. Rajiv made it to the third stage of qualifying at Wimbledon a couple weeks ago. Lost to Dustin Brown. Couldn't get in. Made a challenger final in Mexico about two months ago. His best result of the year. Oh, beautiful top spin lob there by Leighton. Caught Ram completely leaning in. Tries to guard the net there, and the ball's hit over his head and bounces short, way in. That's been a signature shot for Leighton throughout his career. Not a lot of guys can say that about their lob, but, but Leighton, as an offensive lobber, has been brilliant. Yeah, it is. Gets the hold for 2 4. New balls, please. 
Ramlitz. A lot of compliments have been paid oh, to yeah. Hewitt over the years. Andre Agassi called him one of the best shot selectors in the history of the game. What does Andre mean by that? Well, his choice of shots. He's playing consistency and not going for broke. He's a very smart, as I said earlier, a counter puncher. He'll use your speed if you let him. But he doesn't try. He plays within himself. He doesn't try to overhit. Doesn't try to overattack. But very consistent. He says he idolized Agassi growing up. Only eight or nine years younger than Andre. Probably been most compared to, to Jimmy Connors in terms of his defensive skills and competitive fire. Fighting ability. Love 15. This is where the comeback started for Leighton in the first set. Ram with the break in the 4-1 lead. He would held for 2-4 and then got the break in the seventh game. My, my favorite quote about Hewitt might be the one from tennis writer Robert Davis who, who said the only difference between Hewitt and a cement backboard is that Hewitt has a heartbeat. <laughs> I like that. And an occasional outburst. Yeah. That's... Part of why the Aussies love him so. You know, it's funny, yeah, if you yeah, win yeah. and you have uh, outbursts, you're a fiery competitor. Yeah. If you lose and you have outbursts, you're a bitter jerk. You're a sore head. Another one of those lobs oh, that uh, drew the Dicey overhead from Ram. Very good return there by Leighton. Caught it early, Juice. kept it low, cross court. And Ram a little slow coming in here. He's serving for the game, and this is a break point, uh, not a break point, excuse me. This is for Deuce. Leighton gets there. Hewitt has won 63% of the points in this tournament on second serve return. You just saw why. Gorgeous first serve when he needed it. That's six aces for the American. Again. Wrong right. foot, Hewitt, and this time ran.
The Campbell's Hall of Fame Tennis Championships are... The Campbell's Hall of Fame Tennis Championships are brought to you by Jonathan Edwards Winery, New England Charm, Napa Style, and by Kia Motors. At the International Tennis Hall of Fame in Newport, the American Rajiv Ram with a lead in the second set, having lost the first to former world number one, Leighton Hewitt. Aussie to serve here down 2-5. mentioned Leighton working with Tony Roach again. That's their Justina. second stint together. First one was 07 to 09. He's worked with a bunch of different guys over the years. Fifteen. Darren Cahill, Jason Stoltenberg, Roger Rashid, all Aussie. Scott Draper, another Aussie. Nathan Healy, Brett Smith. Boy, he's had a lot of coaches. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a tough cookie. <laughs> Beautiful all court rally there. Ten or twelve hits. And then Leighton lays into this passing shot. Ram comes in quickly. Doesn't hit the ball very deep, however. And Leighton just meets it easily into the open court. Rajiv has been doing some work 40, 15. with Stephen Armitrage, who's the son of Anand Armitrage, and of course the nephew of of the great Vijay, the two-time Wimbledon quarter-finalist. I like that. The yeah. <laughs> you, you don't you don't buy Vijay's great? No, I do. I, I love Vijay. He's a big character in the sport. Wonderful guy. It's amazing yeah, it's that his brother and his son is a coach. Right? You, well, yeah. They don't seem old enough to have well, sons who are old enough to yeah, be coaches. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Ram leads. Five games the Armitrage brothers really broke through for Indian tennis in the 70s and 80s. We mentioned earlier Rajiv's parents are both from Bangalore. Rajiv himself is born in the United States in Denver. Mistaken, and I know I'm not because my producer Harold Heck told me <laughs> BJ <laughs> beat Brian Teacher in 1976 here in Newport, which was the first year of the Hall of Fame Tennis Championships and became the inaugural champion. That's first time. tournament was part of the Grand Prix circuit from 1976 through 1989. Joined the ATP World Tour in 1990. They play for the Van Allen Cup, which uh, our great friend Bud Collins always reminds us is uh, named after Jimmy Van Allen, who took over the club here in 1952 and helped form the Hall of Fame in the mid-50s. Yeah, Glad you mentioned that, Brett, because uh, Bud Collins is uh, recovering in Boston from a series of setbacks on his legs since he fell at the Open. And uh, I talked to Bud this morning, 
Uh, he's in great shape, he says, and we're going to talk to him tomorrow on our show. I look forward to that. The Hall of Fame is not the same without Bud, who is, of course, a member here and a great friend to, to all of us. And uh, you may have enjoyed, as we did, the Wall Street Journal piece uh, last week. I think it was the, the writer Jason Gay uh, spent breakfast at Wimbledon at Bud's house yeah. in Boston with him and watched it on TV with Bud. And we wish him a speedy recovery. Ooh. Good serve by Ram right at Hewitt's head. 40, 50. So set points here for the American to force a third. Takes a little extra time behind the court and in the rough as it really, yeah. they, they mow it a little longer out by where the ball kids and the lines people stand. Seventh double serving uh, into the wind. Rajiv, a little nerves maybe, serving for the set. I know at Wimbledon they use 100% rye grass. I have not researched the uh, the variety here. I'll bite. What is uh, rye grass? Rye, what is rye grass? I don't know. It's grass <laughs> that's uh, with rye seeds on it. That you, cream cheese and some locks. You no, got a bagel. I, I think it's a lot tougher kind of grass. Much softer. There, there might be a, a sprinkle of, of fescue, I'm told. Yes. Couple of doubles in a row. Now eight in the match, and uh, two set points by the boards for Ram. As things get uh, a little tense for the American. Beautiful tactical return there by Leighton Hewitt. Just turned his shoulders and his body slightly and blocked this return back. And Watch after, him there, just turned. Didn't really swing that hard. Got it off his left hip. He leaves the ground there. And after five faults in a row, Leighton kind of knew he was going to get a pitch he could hit. Break point. Three doubles in the game for Ram, serving for the set. Nerves getting the better of Rajiv Ram as he served for the set. Had 5-3 and two set points at 40-15. And proceeded to throw in three double faults, the break for Hewitt, and now we're back on serve. And that's why you see he's having so much trouble qualifying. In these different matches, Rajiv Ram really let Hewitt off the hook here. And he'll be thinking about that as he goes around here to return serve at 
four five. Big moment for Ram, 28 years old, in his first semifinal in exactly three years since he won this tournament, 2009. These opportunities have been few and far between. He's 28 years old now and has a chance to really do himself some good. He'll be about 100, 101 in the world, regardless of what happens today, with a win even further up the chain. And that's double number five for Hewitt. You don't realize how that plays into getting into entries, direct entries into some of the summer tournaments. Oh, yeah. And his second ace, he's already straight into the U.S. Open, regardless of what happens here today. Barely. Usually right around 103, 104, 105 in the world get in straight. When do the entry deadlines close? It's Monday. This Monday. Beautifully feathered and a little come on from Leighton there. It's usually about a six week lead time. Those entry deadlines for the tournament were six weeks out from the Open, two from the Olympics. Good this little drop shot here by Hewitt. Drop shot as the approach shot. That was quite unusual. <laughs> Overrule on the fault call. First serve for Hewitt. Real bad careless error there by Leighton Hewitt. He would have been at 40-15 if you played that point a little slower, a little more confident. Movement to his right knocks off a lunge volley. Watch his quick movement. Beautiful play there. Big point. 30 all. Now he's up 40 30 to get to five all. See uh, one of Leighton's children with Beck getting, getting the sunblock reapply. So Hewitt holds and once again digs out of the 4-1 deficit as he did in the first set and brings it to five all. Five Faced two set all. points in the previous game. Our uh, Tennis Channel colleague Ashley Fisher texted in and, and told us that uh, Rajiv Ram's been doing quite a bit of work with uh, Craig O'Shaughnessy on video analysis, studying patterns of play Love coming off the win that he had against Leighton last year in Atlanta and, and the doubles win th that he had uh, at Wimbledon against Hewitt. The harsh reality is you can just tell him to get that first serve and so serve three doubles to get to lose that advantage. Just much quicker in body movement and at the net. Covers the ball so much easier. So low volley there and he moves to the spot perfectly. Keeps the ball way in front of his shoulder. Beautiful valley. Beautiful return. Love 30 look for Hewitt here. First serve there when he needs it. One of the patterns that O'Shaughnessy has been working with Rajiv Ram on is trying to stay away from that backhand to backhand exchange 
against Hewitt. Obviously the lethal wing for, for Leighton and the weaker side for the American. Lob a little short, and Ram easily covered that. Couldn't yeah. quite get right. that lob to fall into the court, and so Ram holds for 6-5, stops the bleeding as right, Hewitt erased the six, break ten, deficit. Two, While we have a minute, let's go down to Harry Chickma. Thank you very much, Brett, here with a very special guest, Ken Solomon, the chairman of the Tennis Channel. Ken, you came from Wimbledon straight to this event, 14 days of coverage, 14 hours a day of Wimbledon, but you're making the effort to come here to Newport. Tell me about the significance of the partnership between Tennis Channel and the Tennis Hall of Fame. A lot of people are saying I came to see you, Harry. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, look, this is the, if, you're, if you are the Tennis Channel, then a relationship with the International Tennis Hall of Fame and this event is something that is very, very, very important. And, you know, it's symbiotic and you know it's it's something that we think about all year and it's a relationship that we foster all the time and also this event is so special to the world of tennis the venue is second to none what makes the international tennis hall of fame tournament such a special one well it's the tournament and it's the hall itself you know we just came from Wimbledon. I think everybody who ever set foot on a court, whether it's a kid, a professional, a college player, young, old, doesn't really matter. Any country in the world, their goal is to win Wimbledon. Uh, and then, or to win another major. And once they've won a major, every major winner's hope and goal is to be a part of this place, to be a part of the Hall of Fame. This is the ultimate in our sport. This is Mecca. And it's really, really special. It also happens to be one of the most fun and exciting weekends in the world. But when you see what they do and you see the, you know, Guga and Jennifer Capriati and Mike Davies and, and all of the inductees and how important it is to them, you see how important it is to the sport and Tennis Channel is all about that. And what's new with the Tennis Channel? Well, you know, we've broken every ratings record. It's been fantastic. We're hearing from all our friends, and right now we're going to see if uh, if Leighton's going to do it and if it's going to be, uh, you know, John or Ryan a little bit later. So, But uh, the fans are loving it, and we're on a roll, and we really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Ken Solomon, for helping to make this broadcast possible and another great day at the Hall of Fame. Thanks, sir. Back up to you, Brett. And as Leighton slides in his third ace of the day, Serves here to try to force the tie break. We thank the boss for uh, checking in with us. It's nice to work for a guy who loves tennis as much as we do. He sure does. He got his whites on. He was playing yesterday out here at the Hall. And he loves the Hall of Fame, which you could see in his sense and his answers. Ken's on the, uh, on the board of directors here at the uh, Tennis Hall of Fame Thank Museum. <laughs> Leighton thought he might have had that point one. Nice defensive lob from Raji yeah, to keep the point alive, 15-30. A slight bit of frustration on Leighton's side. He is playing at a quicker pace than Rajiv is, and uh, 
and it's starting to frustrate him. All of a sudden, after Leighton fights back to even terms here, now set points for Ram. It'll be his third. He had two at 5-3. And the double faults crept in. He won't have to be uh, serving here. Two quick errors there by Hewitt puts him in trouble. Skyward at a uh, softly offered second serve, chips it into the net. Chip and charge didn't work well there for Ram on a break point. He's got to get the ball in play. And there's why. Two good serves by Hewitt, and we're in to deuce. Slides the serve yes. up the tee. Hewitt, a veteran of 31 Davis Cup ties for Australia, part of the championships teams in 99 and 03. and he somehow managed to pop a backhand back that died just as it crossed over the tape, lunging for it. And Ram tried to make a, you know, really tough shot at it. I mean, trying to make a drop volley out of a sinking, dying backhand chip. Great point there, using the whole court for Ram's advantage. Yes. Good low volley on the first one and in position on the second. The reason I pointed out Hewitt's Davis Cup resume a moment ago is because Ram, 28 years old, has never played a single match for the U.S. practice partner a couple of times. Leighton's at the haven of deuce. That's wide. Real smart play by Ram on that forehand chip. Came in quickly. Take control of the rally. Set point number five. For Ram. Fifth is all he'll need. This one is going the distance. Ram breaks in the 12th game to take the second set. Third is on the way. First semifinal in Newport back after this.
Back live in Newport, break before the third set as Rajiv Ram breaks in the 12th game and uh, the attacking serve involved. First serve, another one. Grass court, white uh, outfit, little old school tennis. Yeah, you don't see much of that these days. Now he's all serving volley when it mattered. Yeah, right. Well, that, that's what you prescribed for him about midway through the second set. You said you got a six foot four guy with a big wingspan and a, and a big serve. Let's make use of it, and, and he did. No question. Here's the. Uh, Newport file on Rajiv Ram. We mentioned the championship in 2009 where he beat Sam Query. Nine of his ten grass court wins have come here, and the upset you, earlier this week against Kei Nishikori, the highest ranked player in the history of Japan, and uh, that's helped him get here to semifinal Saturday. So third set about to begin. The American will start on serve. Isner and Harrison awaiting in our second semi later on. Ram's getting a lot more aggressive now. Yeah, Start this third set. Brilliant return. That's it, 15. Beautiful forehand down that line. By Layton moving well to his right, easily and comfortably. Rajiv can try to stay away from the, the Hewitt backhand, but he, he's dangerous on both wings, this veteran Aussie. That's a, a little grass court bounce for you. Rajiv holds to uh, open this third set. First game, final set. Guys in the locker room getting ready for the second semifinal. A little extra time to cool their jets. Those are the two Americans who will uh, do battle. John Isner, the top seed here. Ryan Harrison, number six in another semifinal. It's been a, a breakthrough year for him. Of course, that started for Ryan last year when he got to the semis in Atlanta, and then he's kept it rolling this year. Semis at San Jose, semis at Eastbourne just before Wimbledon, and another one here on the grass. And he likes the grass, Eastbourne, Newport. Well, he's very natural on the grass. He likes to come in, likes the volley. And a very good young player. Gave Djokovic a little bit of a workout in the second round at Wimbledon, 4-4-4. Four, four, and four. 15.
Leighton gave uh, Novak Djokovic a, an even greater workout at the Australian Open this year, round of 16, stretched him to four sets before finally succumbing to the then world number one, 6-3 in the fourth. That was Leighton's 17th career try against a world number one. He's never beat one. Of course, he spent a, a bit of time at number one himself in 2001. After he won the U.S. Open, he held onto it for uh, 75 weeks, took it back in 2003 for uh, five more weeks. So he's got a total of 80 weeks, which are the eighth most all time. Yeah, there it is. Ram hits that long, so Hewitt holds for one all. And as we talk about weeks at number one, Donald, okay. this is the week that officially Roger Federer tied Pete Sampras for the most weeks ever at number one, 286. Phenomenal that Federer won Wimbledon. And I think the crowd, you know, you, you really thought the crowd was going to be 99 for to one. And Federer over uh, Murray. I was surprised because a lot of you, I'd say it was 60-40. People were for Federer as well as Murray. You think there were more people in Britain for Federer than there were for Murray? No, that... no, I think it was 60-40 oh, okay. for Murray, but not 99-1. Sure. <laughs> and, and as you saw, there was an asterisk next to it. It's a given. Roger will still be number one next week, so he'll pass Pete. Yeah. Boom. Bob, a little short for the six-foot-six six guy. I mean, would you have thought a year ago when, when Djokovic was in the middle of his, you know, 42 and 0 start to the year and Nadal was still dominant on clay, that Roger legitimately had a shot of being number one again, ever? I, ever, yeah, I would have okay. when you say ever because he's too good a player if he's in shape and his back doesn't hurt and he's fit and doesn't have problems, you know, with his kids, whatever. You know, he's got a lot of things going on now and you lose your desire a little bit, but boy, he, he got it back. The match of the tournament for me was Djokovic and Federer in the semis. I mean, that was tremendous play. As far as quality and level of play, it just was. It comes Rams in quickly. And Leighton handles it quite easily. A, a two shot pass, really. I mean, the return was right at Ram's feet, forced the, the volley up, and then he got the sitter put away. And uh, break point's coming for Hewitt. Big chance here for Leighton. Nice, comfortable backhand. Very deep inside the baseline, though. The 13th break chance that Hewitt has had in this match is converted just two. And that goes against all the numbers that he's had earlier this week when he was 17 for 27 on break chances coming in. That he had a second second serve there on his forehand side. Ram has got to get the first serve in, or Hewitt has a great shot here to break. See how he plays it. Big problem now. He's got a second serve on a break point. Come on. 
And there's the answer. Tremendous backhand cross court to break serve and get him back in this match. I love the way Leighton moved on that ball. He went for his shot, knocks it cross court for an outright winner. Back live in in uh, Newport, I beg your pardon. Break lead to Hewitt in the third set. I've got Atlanta on my mind because we're getting ready for the first men's stop on the Emirates Airline U.S. Open Series. Kicks off next week in Georgia with the BB&T Atlanta Open live quarterfinal coverage presented by Mercedes-Benz. Begins Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern on Tennis Channel where champions live. And uh, that's a big week coming up. We've got the Mercury Insurance Open as well for the women and you'll have coverage of that on Tennis Channel as well as ESPN2. Excited to see the new venue down in Atlanta. They've moved to uh, Atlantic Station, more of a downtown venue. They've had a couple different venue changes last couple of years, so they've got a spot that they think will be their long-term solution. Marty Fish will be in the field, his first match since Wimbledon. John Isner back as well. Those are the two finalists from a year ago. Last two years, in fact. Leighton has the break here in the third set. Let's see how he plays it. Ram has got to put together a couple of good returns and try to control the net. Interesting, Leighton was serving and coming in there on his first ball. Beautiful backhand pass. Nice shot there by Ram. Up the line. It's a little chip off the return. Leighton is a little short on that approach shot. Couldn't hurt him. And Ram responded with the winner. Best rally of the match. You get the feeling that Leighton likes it on that baseline. Although he lost the point as he came in on a short ball, but he was certainly comfortable here on the baseline. And Ram made a very good play. A little short, Leighton with a chip, dumps it into the net. 
saw a couple times in that rally the pattern that, that Ashley Fisher was suggesting to us by text a little earlier, which was Ram chipping his backhand up the line to the forehand of Hewitt, trying to get a forehand reply cross court. Ram chips and comes in quickly. Come the voice you heard was Leighton Hewitt yelling, come on, which is his trademark. When he wins a point, sometimes a big point, he bursts out with that. Knocked into the net there on his first serve. Ram didn't expect it. He, he spent a lot less time forward in the court than Ram has in this Hewitt match, but he's so opportune about when he line. decides to come in. Very smart play there. And people throw around that term tennis IQ a lot, and, and, and sometimes it's misapplied. Leighton Hewitt is a guy who legitimately uses his melon on, on the court. That's an even 10 double faults for Rajiv Ram. Wind going to push that ball long from this end when Leighton tries to lob. Rajim really hurts himself, Brett, when he misses that first serve. He misses it quite frequently. There's a double fault. 15, 13. And they, they've come in bunches today. He had the three when he was serving at 5-3, 40-15 with two set points in the second set. Wound it up pulling out that second set 7-5, so it, it didn't hurt him in the larger scheme, but 11 is too many in, in two and a half sets. And that's just too much time to allow Leighton Hewitt to line up a backhand pass. 15 foot. Leighton's got a great chance here to go up two breaks now in this set, 15-40. And 15th break chance coming. And you would figure this would be uh, the stranglehold. Let first up. Pass up the line, forehand wing, and the second break of this final set.
It's been a lean couple of years for Leighton Hewitt. 2011, his first foot surgery, he only won nine matches ah. in nine tournaments all year. This year, second foot surgery. He's only played five tournaments prior to this one and won four matches. This could be the positive mojo that turns things around for the former world number one, two games away from the final. And boy, does he want this match. Puts him back in, he gets some points, move up on the rankings. Be interesting. And it's hard to say what Layton's goals are at this stage of his career, 31 years old, you know, battling various physical issues. But you get the sense he'd like to make one more charge, see what he can do when completely healthy. Plus, he's got three children. He makes pretty good money on the tour. There's his wife, Beck. Biggest fan. Biggest supporter. And it speaks to his drive. This is a 250 level event on the ATP World Tour. The points are not big. The money is not big. Perfect but he, forehand. But he's uh, he's grinding away. Four kilo. $68,000 to the winner. It's a far cry from the $1.9 that the U.S. Open winner will get. Their, their money by about two million dollars but they said it was for the first three rounds that's been the complaint of a lot of the players is that the rank and file the, the, the qualifiers and, and the first and second round losers don't get enough of the pie I think they increased the winner's share by a hundred grand they, you're right they increased the purse by about two, two million, million. 20, I think it's 2. like 25 1, yeah. and a half yeah That's part of what the uh, ATP Tour Player Council was lobbying for to, to try to get some of these so these guys who make a living out here a little more of the pie. It's a big point here for Hewitt, 40-30. And he's got it. Yeah, up 5-1 here in the final set. It was an important one. He was up 40 love, lost two quick points. Ram was not able to hurt him. You know, Leighton Hewitt is quite an unusual type in the sense that he's always been a guy who fought back from any adversity, very competitive. The Australian public loves him for that reason. And I think he's going to try like crazy to play really well at the Olympics on behalf of Australia because they're hurting right now for young players. And he's not young at 31, but he certainly is experienced and respected and feared as a floater in the draw. Thank you. And there is, you see the great return and the instinct. He steps around, hits that forehand, just steps around, bang, that's the win. He reads that serve awfully well. <laughs> Look, another return. Just flicks it off. He's been grooving off both wings on return all day today, all week here in Newport. It's taken him a, a minute to get adjusted to the to the grass, but he's been lighting up the Ram serve. Smart play by Ram there. He waited, waited, held the ball on his racket as long as he could, and Hewitt moved to his right and he flicked it behind him. Oh. 
just wide. We saw the two Grand Slam titles on Leighton's resume a moment ago, the 2001 U.S. Open, 2002 Wimbledon. He was runner-up at two more, 04 U.S., 05 Aussie, lost to Federer at Flushing Meadows, 04, lost to Safin, 05 Melbourne, four other semis at slams. So the American holds for 2-5, but a Leighton Hewitt on the changeover, thinking about serving his way into an ATP World Tour final for the first time in over two years. Time. That was on the grass in Hala. This is on the grass in Newport. Former world number one clawing his way back from injury and showing the heart that made him a great champion for over a decade. Top 10 for every week except 25 of them from 2000 to 2006. Exactly. That's how steady he was. Great record. Hewitt slipped on that second forehand just enough to ramble. Not 15. Lace it down that line. Watch him here. He's going to slip as he starts to come in. And then he doesn't, but he's lost his balance. Oh. Fifteen all. Winner here meets the winner of Isner Harrison, our second semifinal coming up live next. All day long, Hewitt has been passing Ram 30, 15. Early and often. That chip and charge didn't bother him in the least. Just stood there on the baseline, set up his backhand, and went cross court. Two points from match. I mean, Donald, you're seeing a little bit today from Leighton Hewitt a reason why exactly. serving volley tennis has kind of gone away in the yeah. modern game because guys like Hewitt, with that kind of racket and string technology, can slice a guy up. And Hewitt is really playing himself back into shape. He's going to be tough on the tour. Give him about three more weeks.
good rally from the baseline from both players. Well, break chance here for Ram. Scrambles out of that head out. Now he's back to Deuce. from about five paces behind the baseline. Another yep. leisurely approach from Ram. He loves that come on after he hits a good shot. That's the voice and groan of Leighton Hewitt in ecstasy when he hits a winner. <laughs> so break point turned around and now match point for the Aussie. Yeah. Leighton Hewitt forward. finds himself in an ATP World Tour Six final four. for the first time Six in two four. years. He needed three sets Five to do seven, it, seven, but he takes out Rajiv Ram, 6-2 in the third. He's very popular with this crowd. Wife Beck with two of their three children here. <laughs> 